Hi everybody, my name is Carrie and this is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome back. Today is episode number two of Scrappy September, week two. Um, we are using our scraps this month. If you're a quilter like me, you've got lots of scraps. Small scraps, big scraps, all the different kinds of scraps. And if you're like me also, you don't throw them away. So last week was my first episode. We talked about, we did a great project using our two and a half inch squares. I gave some tips and tricks on how I manage the scrap whirlwind um, rather than having a random bucket overflowing of all the scraps that I basically dreaded going into. I try to cut them down into commonly used sizes, two and a half squares being my most popular. So last week we did um, a fruit basket, fruit basket quilt block. And I showed you guys my design. I will link that video below and above if I can figure it out. Um, showing you guys how to do that. So we're continuing down the two and a half inch road. I wanted to do one more quilt block um, using the scraps that size to show you that it doesn't just have to be these kind of unique onesie twosie shapes. I should have brought, um, I will pop in a picture right now of the fruit basket blocks I was talking about that we did last week and then showing you that it doesn't, it, you can make a traditional quilt block using this same method. And so what I want to show you is, um, a common quilt block, you know, there's hundreds and thousands of different quilt blocks in history. Um, a common one called is a granny square quilt block. And, and what it is, is it is two and a half inch squares in this pattern, in this formation. Usually there's a neutral on the outside. There's eight of one color, four of another color, and one of the of a of a third color now you can do them all tonal like this is pink on pink on pink or you could have pink with green with blue the sky's the limit just google granny square and you will be you'll find oodles of options um i used to make this quilt this quilt block all the time it's a great scrap buster quilt um you always have scraps this size but the traditional way to make this quilt block is to take your two and a half inch squares and sew them. Sew your quarter inch seam, sew your quarter inch seam, sew your quarter inch seam in all the different lines. So, you know, you're gonna have five, one, two, three, four, five lined up, and then you'll have three, and then you'll have seven. And then this is where it gets tricky. So you've got all these, so connecting square to square to square, easy right? You've got all these strips now of two and a half inch blocks. Okay. Well, the tricky thing that gets into it, the traditional way is lining up these points. You can spend hours as an exaggeration, but you can spend lots of time trying to pin or finagle the fabric right under the machine so that the points of your different two and a half inch strips line up perfectly. And I got super frustrated with that. You know, I ain't nobody got time for that. And so I am using my same interfacing cheater method. It's not, it's not cheating, but it's efficient. It works great. Um, method to make this block and you can see Every point is perfect. And I promise this is not hard. You can do it. Um, so today I wanted to show you the, how we do that. But um, instead of, and so I I've, I've, will have a whole tutorial after this showing you guys what I did. And I ended up laying out, grabbing from my rainbow coordinated two and a half inch strip bins because I like to organize them in rainbow order. And so... One day, you know, it's a great scrap buster. I might have a rainbow granny square quilt. And so I went ahead and I laid out, so there's an orange, another pink. So these haven't been sewn up yet. A purple, 
a green, and instead of using a white or a neutral, I went ahead and I grabbed this white that has a funky speckled rainbow polka dot just to add some extra funky flair to it. Aqua. So I've got these blocks all matched up and I was gonna make something with this and this is gonna be a rainbow quilt. But the reality is, is a quilt takes a lot of time and those are blocks um, that I can build on as I go. There's no rush on that. Um, it's good to go. But so I wanted to investigate and work on, but I wanted to still come to you guys this week and give you this project. So I dug into my other scrap bin. Okay, so like I said, solids, two and a half inch squares, three inch squares, four inch squares. I do the squares or I do with the fabric. That's how I do it. Okay, but what if I do a specialty quilt? Like for example, last Christmas, Christmas of 2020, 2020, I made, and I'm going to go ahead and insert a full size picture of this quilt in the video right now. So you can see it in full size. Cause obviously me holding it up, I'm only going to show you a little bit at a time, but you can see, see that I, I did a sawtooth star and then a nine patch. But it was only two fabrics. Well, there's three. There's the border fabric too. But I used this really fun cardinal fabric with this winterberry red. Um, it's a great winter theme quilt that I made for my parents. So, because my mom's got a thing for cardinals. And so I thought this was great. And so anyway, so I made this. I used, I had bought one yard of each of the colors, the red and the turquoise. And then I had bought one yard of this cream, one yard of the edge. So I had bought one yard of four colors. I made the quilt. Fast forward to now. So again, I don't get rid of any fabric, but that I wasn't going to cut up in the funky. I didn't cut it up. After I finished using it, it went into a Ziploc bag where these are all matching coordinated scraps. If you're going to make a small project and you need coordinated pieces, here's your, you know, project in a bag. And so I have different bins of those kinds of scraps. So that's a different world of scraps. So instead, I decided to dig into those this week. So same concept. I'm totally going to go over how you make this block. That's the, that's the tutorial of today is making the grainy square block using this super awesome, not going to call it a cheater, this super great way of getting those points to match up perfectly, using the fusible interfacing, getting it done, and it looks like you are an expert sewer. So instead of doing the rainbow one, because I want that to be a quilt and I didn't think I was gonna have enough time to put all that quilt together and I wanted to show you, I wanted to take you from a project from start to finish during these scrappy September um, tutorial Wednesdays, I didn't wanna just be like, okay, and just imagine it's done. No, no, I wanna start to finish and I and I couldn't do it for the rainbow quilt. So I, I zigged, I zigged and zagged. And so I went and I pulled out my um, scrap Ziploc from this quilt. Cause I thought, you know what? Table runner, perfect table runner. So you can see, this is what we're gonna be making today. You can see I've got seven granny square blocks all perfect points if I do say so myself and they're made using this method using these scraps I don't even know how many I mean not that much you just need two and a half inch squares you you know use what you got um it's not a pattern it's not a rocket science this is about using your scraps so I ended up being able to make seven blocks with the scraps I had so that's how long this table runner is it's about as wide as my arms can reach um and so we're going to be putting this together today okay so here we are back and I don't want to repeat too much if 
If you're a little confused during this tutorial, you should definitely go back to last week's, the first week of Scrappy September and review the method that I'm going to be using here. I'll give you a little like super quick overview of what I'm doing just so you're not completely lost in the dark, but go back to that one. I really dive deep into how you do this. Okay. So I've got my foam core board. So last week I showed you guys Here's my cheater sheet from last week. You know, I took my, my Omni Grid ruler. I drew my two and a half inch lines both ways on my dollar store foam board. And I used this as my grid to kind of do my puzzle from last week. So I kept that one there in case I want to do any more of those projects. So I flipped it over and I did the same thing. I did the lines first and then so that I didn't have to think about it when I was setting these blocks up, I went ahead and I took three, four different color Sharpies, colored them in. So it's again, like fabric placement coloring for dummies and it was easy. So it, I do the pre-work so that it's easy to figure out. So I've got the four different colors, the outside neutral, the color one, color two, and color three. Again, any color you want, as you saw in, in the, Quilt runner, it can be matching, not matching, coordinating, rainbow, whatever you want, sky's the limit. So again, now I'm gonna take my Pellon. Let me show you again what I use. This is my favorite, oh, let's see if it zooms. It's Pellon 911 Fusible. So it's a fusible, lightweight, one side interfacing. I cut this. I don't know what size it is. Let's see. I cut this about 13 by 13 because that's what it worked out to be. And then from here, so I've got the fusible side up and I'm going to go ahead and start placing my fabrics, laying them down so that they're ready to go. So like I showed you, I am doing, this is my Christmas one. And I know that in the video, I'm showing you a different one that I'm going to work on, but while I was putting this one together, I decided to go ahead and turn the video, and this would be a good one to show you guys just how I do the placement of the fabric. So I always just start in the center. I do my four exterior ones, and then I grab the teal, which is the colorway I'm using for this block and you just place them all following the easy to follow grid. That's my favorite part of doing the pre-work. It's a little bit of work to get the grid drawn up, but it makes it so much easier when you are actually putting the blocks together. So instead of doing a white neutral on the edges of this one, I'm having the solid be red so that the interior blocks pop. Um, I'm super excited for this one. I think it's gonna be, you know, the, the turquoise and the cardinals are, are just gonna pop with this red frame around them. So it was just that easy. So I've got them all, like I said, interfacing, fusible side up. Fabric placement took less than two minutes for the block. Now I'm going to go ahead and carry this over to my ironing board. And uh, okay, I brought my granny square that I laid out over to the ironing board, um, trying to be as careful as possible to make sure that the blocks didn't shift. Uh, they always do walking across the room. So I'm just going to line them back up. They don't need to be perfect, just like last time. Close enough is good enough. Um, and it looks like we are good to go. So I am using my same cover cloth as last time. You want to use a cloth when you're pressing to put over top of your block because this is fusible interfacing. So as you can see, there's exposed interfacing uh, that's not being fused to anything. And so if you didn't have a cloth, it would stick to your iron and that would make for a hot mess. So always have a cover cloth when you're using this. I use the same one. I use it until it's too sticky and icky and then I get a new one. Um, 
So I'm going to put it on there real quick. I'm using my Laura Star Steam Iron today. Uh, one of my favorite studio purchases. Treat for myself. I use a little bit of steam. Not too much. Just enough. Go over it a couple times. And you can see it's stuck to the pressing cloth because obviously there was some exposed interfacing that fused to the cloth. But it peels off real easy. And as you can see, now the blocks are all ready. They're attached to the interfacing and ready to go to the sewing machine. Okay, everybody, now we're at my Juki machine getting ready to stitch up these granny square blocks. So we have ironed them. And um, so now they, this is a different one than the one that I'm using mostly during the tutorial, but I wanted to show you the sewing portion using this. Concept's all the same. Um, but so this is a pink one. I've got the iron on, the, all the two and a half inch squares are ironed on the fusible interfacing, ready to go. And so now I've got her at the machine and it's time to stitch her up and get those perfect points. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is I always do the long sides first. There's two long sides, but I just pick a long side and I go. So this is very similar to the fruit basket tutorial. If you guys watched my last week's scrappy September tutorial showing you the two and a half inch squares, um, sewing concepts exactly the same. Um, but I am going to show you just in case you didn't see that one and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, Carrie. So the first thing you're going to do is you, it's an easy fold. It naturally finds the line, the, the skinny little gap between your fabric squares. So you just fold it up. Well, darn it. Hold on. Let me get my machine threaded. I thought I was ready to go. And yes, I should learn how to use the automatic threader, but I haven't. Anywho, so you've got her folded up, ready to go, natural seam, put your presser foot down. You're gonna line up quarter inch foot. So I'm using my Juki 2010Q. Um, I line up my foot, quarter inch, edge of this fold is right on the edge of my foot. Back stitch. Straight line. Use my presser foot thread cutter. And you can see now I've got that perp. You can see right there where I, I just sewed. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the seams. I'm going to work from the inside out. So I'm going to do the two long sides. Now, of course, when I'm doing these, I do them in bash work, meaning like for the table runner. <laughs> I'm doing seven blocks. So I would do seven of the first and just batch work. But obviously that's not productive for the tutorial. So you see, I've done that. So then the next one is just moving out. So I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I've brought my seven pieces to the ironing board. So far, I have stitched one side. Now I'm gonna show you guys on one of the other blocks what I'm talking about. So that would have already been in the video, but I wanna show you guys what, what that means. So I'm stitching all the quarter inch seams in the same direction at once. And then I'm gonna come and iron them all over. So that way they're flat for my folds to do all the direction this way. It'll make sense, I promise. So I'm gonna take my trusty iron. Again, I'm gonna use my pressing cloth because I still have this active fusible interfacing exposed. And so if I iron directly on it, it's gonna make a hot mess on my iron and that's a pain to clean. So I've got my Laura Star, well, she just automatically turned off. <clears throat> So I've got her all warmed up, ready to go. I've got her dialed in to the highest temperature. I'm gonna use steam. I just feel like steam helps everything lay flat. 
It's one thing I love about this iron is you can, the buttons are just easy and the steam just goes. Okay, again, remember, because there's exposed interfacing, it's, or inner, exposed fusible, it'll stick a little bit, but that's okay. So you can see, it looks kind of long and skinny because I've only sewn the one sides, but you can see that now I'm gonna go back and fold again, starting at this point, and do the other direction. And then we're gonna have the perfect square. Okay, I brought the rectangle piece back over to my ironing board. Again, you can see that one piece is, I've seamed the one side. All one, two, three, four, five, six lengthwise seams going one direction. And now I'm gonna do the opposite direction. So what that means is on the start in the middle, just like I did when I first started, fold lengthwise and stop. I always do the two longer. Now I would batch how I did the first section. Sorry, I'm not gonna talk over the machine. Um, how I did the first section is I definitely batched, meaning I sewed all seven at the same time. But I wanted to come and show you guys, see the first seam? So now this first line, all those points match up perfectly. Point, 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 point. So this middle row is squared up and ready to go. So now I'm gonna do this seam and this seam. And all for seven, for all seven blocks. And then I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, I'm back to the ironing board. Really don't need to show you all this step, but I feel like a tutorial video should show you all the steps. So, um, you know, I did, now you can see the back, it's sewn on the zigzag side, the one side, and then the new side. And so they're all stitched up. Now I just have to iron them open again. Real easy, gonna grab my pressing cloth, open it up. Start in the middle and then work my way out. Try to open those seams outward. That's, so that's a tip. I definitely start in the middle and go to the left and to the right. Again, I feel like a broken record, but they it sticks. And there she is. So she is all set. All the points are perfectly lined up. That is the beauty of this trick. And I wasn't sitting there finagling at the machine worried about connecting my points at every point intersection. Um, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna iron the other seven and then I'm gonna take it to the design table slash cutting mats, trim them up before. So I've got them all ironed up. I've got them on my design table slash cutting mat. I've grabbed my Omni grid um, cutter and my Opa rotary tool and I'm gonna start trimming. So the great thing about this trimming is it's forgiving. In that I, if even if I have a little wonky, you can see that sometimes it's a little wonky, but that's okay because I'm going to use this particular block to trim. Meaning I want a quarter inch from the edge of the cup, not the red, but the color, the in the first exterior interior color block. I'm going to mark my line at a quarter inch, quarter, 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 line it up straight and then trim. And then I'm going to turn it, line it up quarter, 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 trim. Going to do it two more times. 
and then you will see that I've got a great granny square block ready to sew together. And you can see, so it's close to being perfect, but it's not exactly perfect. But how that's gonna work, so here I've got my interfacing scraps. That's gonna get thrown away. What makes this work, how this is so forgiving, is we're gonna add a strip around the whole thing. So obviously this is not wide enough for a table runner. I want my table runner usually to be about 12 inches wide, give or take a smidge. And so I did a quarter inch because I do quarter inch seams. So if you do wider seams, you're gonna, or skinnier seams, trim according to the seam that you use. So you can see there's some, you know, exposed interfacings on the quarter, but the great thing is those are all within a quarter inch of the edge. So they're all gonna get caught up when I sew. And so I'm going to create these perfect points when I sew these strips. So what I have is some more red scraps. These are the, this is the red that I have. You can see it's a long, I don't even remember what's probably from a quilt back of some sort, but I'm gonna go ahead. This is what I cut those red squares from. And now I'm going to cut so the, right now the block is measuring about eight and a half, nine inches wide. If I want it to be about 12, give or take, I can always trim later, but I can't add on. So I always go a little bigger than I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim two and a half inch strips out of this red. And so now I've got miles and miles of strip. And what I'm gonna do is cut them all. So I'm gonna sew the strips on and then there's gonna be a strip break between each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the rest of the blocks using my quarter quarter round method. I'm gonna go ahead and exact cut a bunch of stripes for the spaces in between each quilt. And then I'll have some long strips for the edges on the side. You'll see what I'm talking about when I put it together. Okay, I wanted to come back here to the design table real quick and show you what I've done before I go over to the sewing machine, laying out your pattern so that you understand and so that you've planned out the colorways before you start sewing is always a great idea. So what I did is I went ahead and I realized I had five blocks that were blue with white inside and two blocks that were white with blue inside. And I had seven blocks. So I had to, you know, symmetry is something that I'm fond of. So I planned um, two blue, white. Blue, white, two more blue. I just wanted to show you guys, you know, the process of what I do before I start sewing. And then while I was laying it out, Rather than having the two and a half inch strip like I had cut and having the blocks be that spaced out, I decided I didn't want them that spaced out. It's already gonna be a pretty good size runner. So I went ahead and I cut those two and a half inch strips in half. I liked the one and a quarter. So it's gonna end up being about three quarters in between each block. It's gonna sew up and look just like that. I like that look. Well, we're gonna cover that white. So that's what we're gonna go for. So I went ahead and I cut the strips exactly, lined them up with the sides. Now I'm gonna take it to the machine, sew my quarter inch seam, and then I'm gonna sew them all together. Machine, like I said, I'm going to sew these skinny red strips with a quarter inch seam. I'm gonna start back stitch. You don't need to raise, cause you know, you're going through some bulk there at the corners at the points. Slow and steady. Use my pressure foot cutter. Open it up. And you can see the points are going to be perfect once I iron them open. So I'm going to stitch that for all seven blocks. I wanted to come and give you guys a, a separate tip. So if, for whatever reasons, if you're cutting and your interfacing is kind of wonky, you can see this point looks to be maybe, maybe I didn't cut exactly at a quarter inch. The reason this is forgiving is this. 
So you, you, you're adding this extra fabric and that's the forgiving part. So rather than sewing with the red strip on top, flip it over and you can see the points. If I had a pointer. So right at this point, you can see where your X intersections are, where your two seams crossed when you were sewing the X's. And so when you're sewing the red strip on, you just want to follow the straight line to go from point to point to point. And so it might not be exactly a quarter inch. It might be three eighths. It might be a little wonky, but you will end up grabbing your interfacing, covering it up, and your points will meet, meet up perfectly. And unless you have somebody critiquing your work, that hard, you'll never see. So you remember that one had one of these, whether it was this side or this side, the interfacing looked to be like a little wider than a quarter inch, but because I went and sewed them the back, quarter, 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 point, 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 I was meeting up my line with the points. So it's like a three stitch intersection. And you just go slow and you watch and if you need to use a different colored thread so it's easier to see rather than white on white, as long as your fabric isn't super see-through, since you're using interfacing, you should be able to use like a tan or a, a light pink or just enough so you can see the thread contrast. And if that makes it easier, go for it. So I go ahead, I went ahead and did the skinny strips and then I added my two and a half strips on the side. I ended up using that tip technique that I had just given you regarding grabbing the points. You know, that's what I love this about this pattern, super forgiving because, you know, I'm not exact, I'm not a perfect, I'm a human. And so my stitching wasn't exactly on point. And so I love patterns that are forgiving. And so you can see it's a little wonky right here. It's got a little rub, got a little raise, but that's why I cut the extra border fabric a little wider than I ultimately want it to be at the end. Cause then I have the flexibility to cut it straight at the end and you're never gonna know. It shows, I mean, it was made by hand and not a machine. And that's what I love about quilting is everything is unique and one of a kind. And even though you're using a pattern, you're going to to see the intricate, the, the details of the uniqueness of the piece. And so I'm gonna go ahead. And so I used that tip technique so I could grab all the points and they matched up perfectly. Now I'm ironing her stra straight, strat ironing her straight. I'm going to take her to the cutting board. And like I said, you can see right here is the one that glares out to me where it's a little wonky um, because I had to finesse when I was sewing to get that point and that's okay. So I'm going to cut straight lines, probably trim them to about two inches wide. They started at two and a half but I'm gonna cut them straight. Like I mentioned on the design table, I was gonna bring her over and trim her edges. And so I went ahead and I trimmed the edges so now they're 100% straight. It ended up going down to about one and three quarters on either side extra, but that's okay. That's why I do bigger so that I have the forgiveness to do that. Um, you know, it, it's forgiving that way. So I went ahead and I grabbed some of my extra quilt batting that I have. Now remember, I made this seven squares. The whole point is scraps. And so this was made with the scraps from that quilt that I showed you in the beginning of the video. And so the blocks were scraps. But so when I went ahead and when I bought that line of fabric, it came... I went ahead and I had gotten one yard of each. And so the brown tones, when I was deciding on the quilt, really didn't speak to me, so I didn't use them. Um, even though there was this cute brown with uh, red cardinal, I didn't want the brown on my quilt. But when I'm choosing 
the back of my runner, I like it when the backs coordinate with the front, even though you never see the back, I like it to coordinate. And so this is the perfect opportunity for me to use this Cardinal Brown fabric that coordinates, but I didn't like it enough to be a focal point of the quilt, but it's gonna be a perfect quilt back. So what I'm gonna do is, um, because this is the directional fabric and I need to take that into consideration versus the ones I use on the front, um, I always like to choose scraps that are non-directional so that they can twist and turn and you don't have to worry about the top and the bottom. But this fabric is directional, so I do need to be cognizant of that. I need to go ahead and make a stitch up a quilt back real quick. Um, the width of the runner ended up being right at 11 and a half. 12 was my, my goal, but you know, we're a little shy, that's okay. So I like to go ahead and cut my runner backs just a smidge bigger, no rhyme or reason. You know, I'll tear this one and there's one and I need to tear another one to sew them together. It's almost torn in half. Perfect. So I'm going to stitch these two together to make my long quilt back. I'm going to head and stitch up my quilt back. Seam right up the middle. Easy peasy. I decided to go ahead and add the quilt sandwich piece to the video because you know what? Maybe you've never done that. So I definitely want to give you all the tools that you need to actually make a quilt runner. Um, so... It, it's definitely a doable beginner project. Just take it slow and steady with the steps. So you're gonna put your quilt back down first. Correct side down, back side up. You're gonna take your batting, batting down. You always want your quilt back to be bigger. So you see, you can see the edge exposed. The quilt back is peeping through under the batting because the quilt back fabric is always a good two inches wider, if not even more so, um, on either side of the quilt top. So you put the batting down, and then you put the quilt top on top of that. Um, you can see I'm cutting it a little close over here on the edge. Well, maybe you can't see on the video, but I am. And that's because I'm using a quilt batting scrap. I'm gonna be able to make it work, but that's how you do it. So you can see, you can see the three layers when you're working with it. You've got the back, the middle, and the top ready to go. And so then I've got my basket of safety pins. My long arm doesn't have a built-in roller on top. It's a baby lock cornet. I've had it for about five years, maybe 10. I keep saying five everything, I don't even know. So I, I do end up having to pin base all my projects before they go on the long arm, but it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Um, this just holds everything in place. And so that way, when I go and do my long arm stitching or your quilting top stitching, you can get it done. Now you're saying, okay, Carrie, that's great. So happy for you and your long arm. I don't have one of those. I just have my sewing machine. No problem. You can do the same thing. Um, most, a lot of sewing machines are gonna have stitch regulators that are gonna let you do free motion quilting. And I definitely like to start my free motion quilting learning process with the table runner. That's what I always suggest to any of my students. I say, listen, you do not want to teach yourself how to um, free motion quilt on a quilt top that you took days or even weeks to make. Start with a table mat, a table runner, a, a pillow, something that you took an afternoon to make. And so when you're learning, when you're when your free motion quilting isn't up to perfect, you love it, oh my gosh, you're an expert, you won't be disappointed, you won't be so sad that you lost all that hard work from your quilt top, but yet you you have a learning project, and I mean, even I have learning projects. 
um, that I still pull out and I use that are, you know, Christmas table runners or a Christmas pillow. And I taught myself how to free motion quilt. And so you definitely want to teach yourself, have some learning pieces, uh, because learning how to free motion quilt is an acquired skill. It takes time. It takes practice as with all things, um, like that. It's not something that you can just watch a video and be like, okay, I'm an expert. No, unfortunately, it, it, it's a, an acquired skill, um, but you can do it. Just keep practicing. Now, if you don't want a free motion quilt, the great thing with just a standard, you know, everyday sewing machine, just do straight stitches, just do straight lines, just box it somehow. You know, you, you have the, the flexibility and the creativity to, to quilt, quilt the top of your table runner, however you want to see it done. Okay, so you can see that did not take very long for me to stitch up real quick or to safety pin up. Let me cut the extra on this side. Easy enough. Now I've got more scraps for my scrap bucket. Um, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to use my long arm just because that's what I quilt on. Um, it's just easier for me. I can run over this and be done in, in no time. But again, do it on your sewing machine. If you don't have a long arm, it's, it's, it's doable. But... So got her off the long arm. I ended up changing my thread collar. I usually 99% of the time do my top stitching in white, but because the background was red on this, I decided to go ahead and change the top quilt Teen thread color to red so that it would blend in the background and kind of pop in the middle of the blocks. I think it's super fun. So now I just take the safety pins out real quick. Um, it's easy peasy. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut some strips for binding. So like I said before, I had a couple other the fabrics that still match the collection. Um, I used some of them. But I think this one is going to be a nice, would be a nice um, quilt binding. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some two and a half strips to be the binding on that. So I ended up using white fabric or white thread for the quilting on the back, you can see. But then on the front, the red just popped. So I liked it. So I'm going to add um, quilt binding two and a half strips. Uh, I probably need to cut four, probably three. I could measure, but nah. let's just go with one, two, three. I wanted to come and show you guys how I do my binding. Um, I don't do machine binding for my custom t-shirt quilts. I do the hand binding. Um, I just think it gives it a nice, nicer finished look for those heirloom type, like type pieces. But this table runner that took me an afternoon to make, yes, it's going to be beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But this is not the treasured heirloom that my um, heirloom quilts are. So I do do machine binding on these type of products for both my table runners and my project bags is machine binding. So like I showed you guys, I do a two and a half inch um, piece of fabric folded in half. I stitch it to the top. I know binding is, you have to find out what works for you. Some people do machine back to front. Some people do front to back. It's personal preference. See what you like. See what works for you. See what you're good at. But I'm going to show you what I do. So I do front to back. So what that means is I sew the two and a half inch binding to the front first. So you can see I sewed it down on the front. It's a quarter inch plus. So it's not yeah, three eighths, but it's definitely a quarter inch, a, a, a hefty wide quarter inch seam on this um, because I'm using two and a half. If I went ahead and used two and a quarter, I would use exactly a two and a, and, um, but uh, but this is what I do. So then I ended up, then I take it to the iron and I iron it open so that the seam is pulled taut. And so then I change the color of my thread on the machine to red because the edge I'm going to do is red and I want the thread, the stitches to disappear. 
So it's like stitching in the ditch, but well, it's kind of like stitching in the ditch. I'm, I use one of my clover clips and I just slowly, this is definitely where speed is not how I go. I go slow and steady because I want the needle to hit right to the left of the binding. And then I move my clip down, make sure that my binding folded back covers up the stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and take the camera off the tripod and see if I can get y'all a closer view. So you can see, this is what I'm talking about. I want my needle to hit right to the left of the binding. So let's go back to what I've already sewn. So you can see I'm stitching, you almost can't even see those stitches. They're kind of stitched in the ditch. And then you flip it back and you have a nice edge sewn on the back. And that's how I do my binding. And she's done seven blocks of quilty granny square fun using just scraps I had from the quilt that I made my parents last Christmas. Using up those scraps, making a table runner, and I think it turned out great. No one will ever know that you use the super tricky interfacing to get those perfect points, and it looks so great. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, I'm having tons of fun with Scrappy September and coming to you guys, using up my scraps. I mean, I've already got a Christmas gift. Shh, don't tell them. Um, ready to go. So next week, I haven't quite figured out what we're gonna dig into. I know I've got um, a couple with the fabric um, blocks and ideas that I, I use all the time. And so I definitely wanna bring you guys along on one of those type of projects. But we will see what we're doing. I hope that you're enjoying the tutorials. I would love for you to like and subscribe. Um, follow me on Instagram if you don't. I, I cross stitch, I quilt, I do all the things and I'm super excited to share them with you. Um, thanks so much for watching. Bye.